Excellence. It's what educators strive for, parents hope for, and students deserve. We put third grade teacher Tiffany Marinpo to the test. A science education expert observes one lesson and gives notes on how Tiffany can improve her skills. She then has one week to make changes before the expert gives a final assessment. I'm very passionate about what I do, so it is really hard at times when people come in and if there's a whole notebook, you're only seeing, okay, are these all the things that she thinks I'm not doing well? Tiffany Marinpo is a third grade teacher in Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania. Tucked between the Pocono Mountains on the Pennsylvania-New Jersey border, Stroudsburg is midway between Philadelphia and New York City. I've been teaching 10 years now, and I've always taught third grade. I love third grade. I love it because it's the year that they feel like they're all grown up because they learn how to write cursive, which they feel very sophisticated. And I love that you can still spark their interests and their curiosity, but they still call you mom by mistake. Stroudsburg Intermediate Elementary School is home to grades three and four. With 800 students enrolled, the school boasts a staff of more than 100 people. I've worked with Tiffany for the last six years. She certainly has a gift, not only probably an innate gift, but also a, a, a learned gift. I really believe that she takes her um, profession uh, beyond the classroom. <laughs> There's just nothing like when a child gets it or there's a child who feels they can't get it and you can help them gain that confidence and be proud of himself. There's nothing like that. Excellent. Now, I think Ms. Marimpo is an awesome teacher. That's the best part about my day. I wake up and I think, oh, thanks. I just want to go to school. She's loving, she's caring, and she's beautiful. <laughs> Okay, let's see if you prepped her up. I'm picking her in a reporter. Sarah, you were using your brain. Tell me, what did you come up with? Area. Excellent. Yeah. Tiffany has little problem keeping her students engaged. What is the area? Quickly talk with your group. But she recognizes that there is always room for improvement. This is the first year that I'm teaching water unit um, because last year we had started it and I was on maternity leave. So it is, it's a lot at night, just kind of reading over it, making sure I know what I'm teaching. Tiffany's classroom is equipped with the latest interactive technology, but she knows she can be using it to greater advantage. Last year, um, I received the Promethean board and it was actually right before I went out on maternity leave. So I didn't really have too many opportunities to use it last year. Two children from the Life Skills Special Education Program joined Tiffany's class for science lessons. She tries to ensure all her students benefit from the material. The hard thing, I think, with the grade level that I have and the different levels I have, it's sometimes hard to accommodate and make sense for maybe the students that are, you know, significantly lower, like the life skills kids. Some of the experiments um, don't make sense to them. So it's trying to make it more relative to real life and why we're doing it and just tapping into what they can get from it. We challenge Tiffany to aim for excellence. Dr. Christine Royce is a science education expert. She will observe Tiffany's science lesson and offer professional guidance on how to improve her teaching methods. A teacher who's doing a good job, first of all, has done their homework. They have homework too. They need to look at what kind of strategies and approaches they're going to use. What works today may not work tomorrow. You know, I'm doing it anyway. Every night I'm going home and I'm doing it, and this will provide for a great experience with having someone come in that actually understands the field and knows it and can work with me on it. First question I have for today, what have we been working on in science? Refresh your memories. I'm gonna grab a random reporter, see what we came up with. Even Steven. Um, we've been working on to see what would evaporate faster. Ooh, specifics, I like it. Yesterday we worked on evaporation. We started taking a look, we set up an experiment now, let's talk about how we went through our experiment. We came up, we had our question, we came up with the hypothesis. Okay, we made our hypothesis, went over our safety rules from yesterday, 
went through, we put our paper towels in the water. We squeezed out most of the water. We put each cup, each into a cup of its own. And then we put the two cups on the ballots. Now, our conclusion was to be continued today, okay? So let's try it out. We're going to hand out our materials from yesterday and we are going to see what conclusion we can come to. I think one of the first things I noticed was the fact that she actually had students engaged in and doing science. It's nice to see that students were actually um, doing the investigations, thinking about the scientific process of asking questions and developing a hypothesis, and then also thinking about what they have to do in setting up the procedure. No, guys, see, that's why. This evaporated badger, so the paper towel's like nothing now. That is, and that one's still wet. Now, what did you discover and why? What is our conclusion? Excellent. Did you hear that, Eve? He discovered that the heavier cup was the one that had the lid on it, which is what we all discovered. So the water that was in your paper towel that we left open changed into an invisible gas. Does anybody know what that's called? It's called water something. Anybody ever hear water vapor? That's what water vapor is. When that water evaporated into the air, it created something called water vapor, okay? So we did one main keyword, evaporate. And both of those words are in the back of your science journal in your little pocket of keywords. So right now, what I'd like you to do, look in your science journal in the back, pull those little keywords out of your pocket, and I'd like you to find the words water, vapor, and evaporate. See if you have them in the back pocket of your book. On those two words, evaporate and water, vapor. I'd like you to put a little check and then put them back inside your folder. Now, this is actually something that we're gonna really, going to really look at tomorrow. Now, we have two lovely scenes. They're both glass containers. Look at temperatures, okay? Think about that. Now, let's see what happens. What do you think would evaporate quick, more quickly? With the cup of water that's in a sunny, nice day, or in the desert? Which one would? evaporate more quickly. Talk with your group. Which one and why? Which one do you think will evaporate more quickly? Okay, freeze for a second. Let's watch and see what happens. Where do you think the water would evaporate more quickly? If you think a sunny day, raise your hand. If you think it desert, raise your hand. Okay, let's try and see. So we're going to think it's over here, okay? Let's watch what happens and see. Okay, so it's day, it's night, the water's evaporating. Which one evaporated more quickly? Which one was empty first? The desert. Overall, I think the science lesson went really well. Tiffany is a really strong teacher, and the students have a really good grasp of science content that was presented for the curriculum. I did identify a few areas that I think she could work on to improve her lesson so she can go from being really good to moving it towards the next level. Dr. Royce and Tiffany sit down for a hard look at her science lesson. Well, Tiffany, thank you for letting me come to your classroom today. I really enjoyed it, and I enjoyed seeing what you're doing with your third graders. I actually really, really enjoy having you as well. Many of the kids I talked to could tell me exactly what was happening. Um, good. Well, we <laughs> actually, you know, That's that great. was one of the really good things in your lesson. You had the kids doing science. They were having those aha moments. Some other things I noticed when I was in your classroom um, focused on some things that you could tweak. We all look for new things to improve and yes, new strategies. Absolutely. And that's part of the uh, professional development process. Coming up with a list of key questions you actually want to mm -hmm. ask the night before to make sure they're not all recall questions or yes. simply comprehension questions, but getting into the application questions is one strategy. That is an area that right. I'm always trying to get better at and have better questioning. Say, I'm not going to have more than 10% of the questions I'm asking today be knowledge or be comprehension. Like, how else could I set up my questioning? Say to them, if you thought about evaporation this way, mm -hmm. can you give me an example of? Very often when you're saying things like, can you give me an example ah. of, you're <laughs> asking them to apply it to a different situation. I find myself asking the questions and having them really explain why, mm -hmm. and, but then when can they have give me to an example give of? an example of it, that 
does take it that step further that I yes. haven't been able to do. What happens when water gets really cold? Cold, thanks. That's an example where you asked a question that was a very specific question. Mm -hmm. What happens when water gets really, really cold? Exactly. And the kid said it turns into ice. Mm -hmm. Following that up with the question of, well, what happens when that water that's now turned into ice warms up? Gets them thinking about the reverse process. So uh, by asking even questions that you might not yet have covered to try and take those um, students a little bit further and just see where they are. One of um, my greatest struggles this year is trying to tap all those different levels. Right. And being that I have um, the range of you know students from a life skills program mm -hmm. up through um, students that have the gifted you know plans. Right. Anytime you could let them try and interact and discuss, mm -hmm. um, that research shows that the social interaction is how they will learn. Exactly. Yeah, um, that's why I'm big. Totally group oriented as far as that goes. So perhaps having key questions at the table um, that they're supposed to think about um, where different kids could perhaps have different responses based on where they are on the spectrum. And then when you're going around and having all of them report out, you start from the lower recall cognitive questions moving up towards the application and analysis. So right now what I'd like you to do, look in your science journal in the back. Pull those little keywords out of your pocket, and I'd like you to find the words water, vapor, and evaporate. See if you have them in the back pocket of your book. And you might ask them to literally say, what I'd like you to try and do is group your scientific lingo or your science vocabulary mm -hmm. into three different groups. Okay. I'm not going to tell you what those groups are, but you need to figure out why you put a group together. Some other ways I might do that is um, grounding it, have other pictures on the table. There's several websites that do provide um, animations that you can actually copy or clip or paste or print something and laminate. Now, Christian, what do we say we're working on? What's the main thing we're working on? Yeah. I would let them mm -hmm. try and work through the process of describing that themselves. Mm -hmm. And by having the small groups either report out or putting it on the board will allow them yeah, One like more step idea. in the ownership associated yeah. with that process. So typically, like, I'll have them do it within their group, mm -hmm. but I've never really had them show it to the class. And that kind of brings me to the use of the Promethean board. Mm -hmm. You've got technology, and yep. you're using it. And trying. it's a great way to use PowerPoints <laughs> yeah. and put information up. Um, but trying to make your lessons, bringing in the visual aspect. Mm -hmm. So finding some interactive games or activities where you, where you have the kids getting out of their seat and coming up and, and interacting yes, with the board. That would be wonderful. An example, yeah, you start it and set up mm -hmm. um, with the what kind of day it is, what kind of temperature is it, and which do we think will have faster evaporation. Give each group a different set of variables and then allow them to come up and literally manipulate the different variables on the screen. You can run through four or five different setups very quickly using the interactive board. Yeah. And then you also have several kids interacting with the board rather exactly. than just one. In 